Hi, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about John E. Sarno, somebody who I admire very much. And I went to his lectures in the 1980s, which makes me feel like a dinosaur. <laughs> but at any rate, surgeons can pretty much find something if someone's complaining of pain. So his explorations are, um, he has some wonderful books. My favorite is Mind Body Prescription. One that's a little more psychologically oriented is the, the Divided Mind, but one that is more accessible and really applicable would be the Mind-Body Prescription. So at any rate, he discovered, you know, he didn't know the exact science, but that often people's rage and their, their other deep emotions were being repressed, and so the body was feeling the pain. And you know, he was saying that the, it's sometimes easier to feel physical pain than it is to feel the reality of some of the things going on in our lives. I know, you know, personally, this was, I was affected in a couple of ways that I'll tell you soon. But even the International, uh, the International Association for the Study of Pain has changed their definition. And this is the way they define pain. It's defined as an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience with actual or potential tissue damage. Potential tissue damage. So there are so many people now that are starting to find the science behind what John Sarno proposed, what he theorized. There's a man named Lorimer Mosley who is a fascinating guy in Australia. And he'll say that pain is created 100% of the time by the brain. So, and he gives a great example in his TED Talk. If you want to look him up, I'll put his name down in the comments below um, or in the description. But at any rate, it's really in some ways um, mind-boggling to think that our physical pain is related to emotional repression. But it's also very freeing. So I'll give you an example. Often people have back pain and the back pain, now remember, I'm not a doctor, you have to go to a doctor to figure out. And if it's kind of unknown pain, you know, it's not direct like, well, gosh, I ran into a, my, the dresser in the corner, you know, my shoulder, the ligaments are damaged. That's, that's real, you know. And all of the pain is real. That's another thing. This isn't fake pain. This isn't psychosomatic imagined pain. This is real pain that's happening in the body. So if doctors kind of count out anything directly that happened, um, and a lot of times we say things like, we slept wrong. Odds are no. <laughs> the pain's coming from a repressed emotion. So I know it's a hard leap to make. But it's, anyway. So let me give you an example. I had Bell's palsy at one point. That's where half my face was paralyzed. It looked like I had had a stroke. But it, they call it a cold in your nerves. And at any rate, I had just made a move across the country. And... I didn't really want to make the move, but I was being a trooper and, you know, I just, I didn't feel kindred with the place really. I didn't, like the weather, everything about it, I was very far from family and I was just, you know, getting pregnant and having kids and I just, I felt lonely and there was so much going on for me emotionally, but I was a trooper. <laughs> you know, it's when we have that sort of perfectionist um, type A sometimes mentality. And underneath, I was really, really having a lot of emotion about it. But the way it came out for me was that my face got paralyzed. So I was making faces at people <laughs> that I might have made if I had been tapped into my emotions. But, you know, it's hard. It's hard to really even know what we're feeling because we're not taught as a culture to tune into our body and emotions and to learn how to navigate those emotions with, you know, healthfully. So we cut off our emotions, we go to our mind, and the emotions have to create something, so they often create pain. I get back spasms quite frequently that just come out of nowhere. And it's when the pain comes out of nowhere that you can pretty much assure yourself that it's repressed emotion. And that's why I see people um, who are often seeing doctors who understand the meth Sarno method, and I'm helping the clients with the emotional aspect. but. You know, it's not easy to know the root necessarily, but exploring, journaling, um, seeing a therapist, you can start to unwrap maybe what's going on for you in your back, in your elbows. Another thing is the pain will move around. Once you kind of figure this concept out and you don't let it rule your life, 
um, then what happens is, is it moves around a little bit. You might get suddenly sinus infection or elbow pain or knee pain. I've had it move around my body. So um, it's, it's just not always an easy concept to grasp. Um, but his books are really helpful because that's where you want to go. You know, he talks about personality types and, you know, who has a tendency towards this. Um, and also he has a wonderful documentary called All the Rage. So check out All the Rage, check out his books. And um, I'm just trying to think if I missed anything. I'm sure I have. <laughs> um, oh, big one, placebo, you know. I really believe in acupuncture, but on the same token, a lot of times when we're treating something that the root is the repression of emotion, you're going to have it be a placebo. You're going to feel good for a month and it's going to come back. And then you're going to be disappointed, you know, and have to go back again. So a lot of times the treatments we seek are placebos. Um, and, and, you know, there's other times where we really need to see an acupuncturist or a chiropractor. But a lot of times, you know, it's we don't need to. It's placebo. You'll feel better for a bit and then it's going to come back. So that's one of the things he really talks about. Um, or maybe the back pain will get better and then you have elbow pain. So it's really important to be tuning into the body and tuning into the emotions. And I hope this has been helpful and that you've learned a little more about Sarno if you're curious. So take good care.